Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin PF, and on today's episode, we've got something a little bit special, and that is the Bamore Vault Edition first release. Now, this is the first part of a four part released series from Bamore, the Isla Distillery. So, we're going to be expecting some peat on this. I know there's some non peated Isla distilleries, this is definitely not one of them. So, here's the bottle, really nice, I think. It's, uh, I'll go straight in and say it's quite expensive, it's about £70, £75 I think I could find it for, but uh, when it first came out it was a little bit more expensive than that. So I actually thought I uh, read some quite bad reviews about it saying it was about £100, not worth that, but uh, this is now roughly £75 in the UK. And although it's a limited release, there's going to be quite a lot of these bottles around, you can still buy it right now, it's not like it's out of stock and you're going to have to go to auction websites, so if you are interested in this review, then by all means go and search it out before it disappears. Now the bottle itself is presented at a really nice 51.5%. I love a percent like that. Uh, the idea behind this range is that each one is going to be a different profile from the Bemore range. So this first one is called Atlantic Sea Salt. Then it's going to be moving on to Peat Smoked Perfection. Then we're going to be talking about full bodied fruitiness and finally we're going to be talking about silky sweetness. Now I don't know about any releases of the other ones yet unfortunately. This one was actually released two years ago so they're being pretty tardy about it. I think it's going to be more of a case of when this is sold out everywhere they're going to start dropping the second one and then maybe carrying on that tradition of waiting till they're sold out before they release the next one. So if you want to see more of this then you're probably going to have to buy some. So it's called Vault Edition. Now we've seen stuff like number one vaults and Vault Edition on a lot of the moors in the past. This is because they have the oldest maturation warehouse in Scotch history and it's called the number one vaults. Quite a lot of famous whiskies from Bamore have been matured there and they make a, uh, make a big song and dance out of telling us about that fact quite a lot. Now I don't know if the fact that it's oldest makes it any better, but it, they're doing something right, let's be honest about it. You know, they might not be the most well-known whiskey off of Isla or in Scotch generally, but uh, they're making good whiskey. But is this one of their good whiskies? Let's check it out and find out where we're at with the nose. So you may not be surprised to learn that it's got a very heavy, salty, briny nose to it. It's almost like a seaweedy thing, so we're kind of reminiscent of Talisca and things like that. Uh, it's quite a common nose actually for the, uh, for, the, for the kind of really coastal distilleries. I find I get a lot of briny notes from places like Talisca and Old Pulteney, uh, but I also get it quite a lot on, on the Bermores. But just behind that, I mean, this might be the fact that I'm getting used to my peat now, but I'm not getting so much smoke. It's 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 not a smoky peat. It's a it's definitely more of the kind of medicinal peat. But there's if you try really really hard, there's definitely some sweetness there. It's not as it's not as in your face as some of the other islas I've tried on the channel. A good example is like the Lagavulin Eight, which is surprisingly sweet on the nose. This is, you have to peel back some layers to get there. Let's try a little bit on the palette. Okay, okay. Definitely more of that smoke coming through now. As the nose suggests, it's more medicinal than it is uh, kind, of, kind of ashy, but it doesn't go as far as like the Laphroaigs. So we're not talking about kind of real like hospital kind of, medicinal notes. The bottle says iodine, but um, I'm not going to go that far because I don't think it's quite like there. But there's the definite fruitiness to it as well, which I'm really enjoying. The really amazing thing is the finish. So when you swallow it, the smokiness subsides, you get a little bit of a hit of the alcohol, 51.5%. But then this amazing fruitiness comes out of nowhere. On the side of the bottle, they say things like blackberries and kumquats. Now, that kind of hits the nonsense meter for me, but there's definite fruitiness there. I don't know if you can boil it down to those specifics for my palate, but not only does the finish just go on forever, 
this kind of fruitiness sticks around. I've been talking about whiskies recently that are quite drying and sour. This is not it. This is something that it, it doesn't immediately draw you back into the next sip. It allows you to kind of sit there and really enjoy it. I think for me, you know, I've read a couple of reviews before I did this review and uh, I noticed a lot of people giving it kind of relatively low scores, talking like three out of five, stuff like that. Maybe like uh, I saw one that was like 79 out of 100. So, you know, talking like four stars. I get it. It's uh, it's not for everybody. I think uh, Bemore itself has a, a specific flavour profile that you can get throughout their entire core range. And if you're not on board with that flavour profile, then it, you're not going to like any of them. You know, there's a couple of distilleries that really are like that. Aaron is a good example, and the Penderin distillery in Wales is a great example of that. If the first one that you try you don't like, it's probably because of their signature tasting that you're just not, you're just not really vibing with. When I first started drinking whiskey, I tried Bamor and I really didn't like it, but I think that might be because I didn't like peat back then and couldn't appreciate all the other flavours that are going on. Now, however, I'm breaking through that, absolutely fine with Pete, loving Pete, and I'm able to appreciate the nuances of Bamora a little bit more. So for me, this is an absolute winner. Uh, at £75, I would definitely go out and buy another bottle of it, which is saying a lot for me because I don't usually push above the £50 mark for kind of general drinking whiskies. But stuff like this is, although it's a no age statement, we don't know how old this is, I really don't think it matters. It's gotta be tried to be believed, and I think you can get samples I definitely recommend you try a sample before you take the plunge if £70 is a lot of money to you. If it isn't a lot of money to you and you do like your Bemores and you like your Islas, just get it. I think it's going to be a good addition to your cabinet and I certainly enjoyed it.